what is up guys you join me here from the Bell and Colville Lotus Evora 400 we're on our way down to the Goodwood Motor Circuit for a customer event down there the way the day's gonna work is we bought both a Lotus Evora 400 the latest specification as well as a Morgan down to the circuit in which a corporate track day is taking place we're going to be exhibiting the cars taking uh, potential customers out on test drives around the fantastic roads around the beautiful Goodwood estate. It's only been a couple of weeks since the revival so I'm hoping that glorious Goodwood will indeed look glorious uh, on this fine September morning. Um, so the way the day is going to work is as it's a members and sort of enthusiast track day is we're going to hopefully take a peep out to the sights and sounds that the track day offers both in the car park and out on circuit speaking of sounds i'm currently enjoying the 400 down on that lovely a and b roads down to goodwood circuit so i'll just leave you with this circuit weather wasn't the greatest unfortunately but uh, looking at the weather right now one it could have been a lot worse and two summer's probably gone by about now but didn't dampen the day at all I mean uh, the guests that are down there from HSBC were awesome uh, all very enthusi enthusiastic um, very nice people um, took quite a bit of interest with the Lotus um, overall probably did about 10 test drives in total um, the guys loved the, the noise that came out of the um, Evora 400, that's what I was really trying to emphasise um, on the test drives that we're doing as well as obviously the, the higher quality that uh, Lotus now offer um, as they've refined their range um, very much in the past couple of years, so the, the last few editions of the car. Um, and I think that really pays, uh, really, I think that, that's paid off that strategy in terms of um, finding what they've got as opposed to uh, trying to develop something new from scratch but um, the Morgan had uh, a really really great reception really the the car itself anyone that drove the car I think came back saying that that was the car for the West Sussex or the Sussex lanes around the Goodwood estate and 100% agree with them it's not a car for going fast it's a car for simply cruising wind in your hair no roof uh, above you obviously as well um, it's really enjoyable car to drive. Um, nice little soundtrack to that one as well. Uh, the, the exhaust, only, only a two litre uh, Duratec engine in, in the Morgan Plus 4, but uh, it gives, gives some nice little pops and crackles on the, on the down changes. The pedals are pretty well positioned for a bit of heel toe as well, which also adds to the effect. And again, with you being uh, out in the open, it really adds to the atmosphere of driving that thing. to drive them no definitely so I jumped at the opportunity and it was blooming awesome I'll tell you that I mean just the presence sat in the car it is a big wide car the Wraith is kind of like a two-door um, four-seater so it wasn't it was well, it was massive for, for what the amount of space you got for the amount of, sort of occupants in the car for example um, and the cockpit itself was just very surrounded but spacious all at the same time. Uh, it felt quite a high ceiling to the car as well. Uh, it had the spec option, the, the 12 grand spec option for the lights in the ceiling which uh, mimicked the constellation 
uh, of a certain area of the sky, I think, something like that, anyways. And um, yeah, I think that, that's the reason just it felt so uh, wronged in there. The big thing for me though that stood out was the sort of length of the bonnet that you have to deal with. But the really cool thing was having the uh, spirit of ecstasy at the end of the bonnet. I mean, that just really made it. It was like, that is why you drive a Rolls Royce. And it tells you that you're driving a Rolls Royce every single time you're looking out the, um, the front windscreen over the bonnet. And yeah, I think that's kind of a sign that once you can see that every day when you're driving along, you know that you definitely, definitely um, but the car itself was just, it was ridiculously quiet, that was one of the things, I, I was pressing the start stop button, there's a very faint sort of vibration obviously where the, the car starts to fire up, but beyond then it's smooth as anything, but the big thing was the sound, you couldn't hear a thing from the V12 twin, twin turboed engine, which was um, pretty amazing, and you just, you just glid everywhere, glided, glid, glided everywhere, um, just putting your foot down the, the, the acceleration was very delayed obviously it's a luxury car I'm so used to driving performance cars all the time that the, the throttle input you, you put it down but there was such a delay to it actually doing something um, I'm sure that that's to do with the comfort of driving the car itself so it's not too aggressive and jerky as a result so um, that was just an observation not good not bad um, and then the other the big thing was just the, the how quiet the cabin was anyways, uh, just driving down the road. I mean, uh, yeah, no road noise from the tyre or anything like that, absolutely nothing from the engine again. Uh, it was very, very quiet and the big thing for me as well was the ride. I, I've been in sort of fairly standard family cars, obviously have a softer ride than the performance cars that I'm normally used to driving. but. Uh, this thing definitely felt a little bit wallowy and not nice and smooth. It was, I was quite surprised at how wallow it felt, but it wasn't like an uncontrolled wallow. You could really feel that the car was just controlling its, its posture on the road. And with that, um, you felt no bumps, no sudden jolts or jars. There was just a, a soft rock as you drove down the road. Yeah, that was, that was, I think, just standard of, uh, of a Rolls Royce uh, or just any luxury car. I mean, obviously the Rolls Royce shares a lot of components with the BMW series. So um, I can imagine that driving a 7 Series or something along similar lines is going to have a similar feel to it as well. Um, but yeah, the wheel was just really big. Had quite a thin sort of uh, edge to the wheel in itself. Um, all that's uh, hand control, that's doing control. Rolls-Royce badge in the middle and it just, it just I felt like Jeeves who was uh, driving a 1950s or 60s car or something like that it just has that um, that feel to it it's quite a large wheel super super light steering you could just steer with your, your pinky finger if you really wanted to uh, it just made it effort, effortless to drive around the sort of tight car park initially before we got out onto the road um, went down to a couple of single track roads in which it's one of the cars that you don't, again, coming from a performance background, you always want to just push a car straight away to find out what its limits are. I think naturally as a racing driver, that's all you want to do. But with this car, you felt a little bit disconnected from the road because obviously how soft the suspension is, but it didn't strike me as something that I wanted to push uh, or flick around at all. It felt like I, I just wanted to glide everywhere. And that is uh, exactly what the car did for me. It was. It was really cool. Um, took it onto dual carriageway in which I had the opportunity to put down the 623 brake horsepower, which is quite a feat really. I mean, uh, it's a two and a half ton car, which means it's not very light, but uh, 623 brake is probably one, it's almost the, one of the most powerful cars I've driven. I think the only thing that tops that is the 650 um, S McLaren. Which is obviously a performance supercar, um, but the the roller um, again there was quite a bit of throttle delay when putting your foot down. 
Um, but what quite surprised me was you, you have no idea what revs you're doing because uh, the car has uh, a speedo and it has uh, a power reserve as opposed to an actual rev tachometer. So I have no idea what revs we were doing or anything like that, but at, at some point, suddenly this uh, roar emerged from the engine itself. So uh, I'm speaking to, speaking to Miles, I mean the car, this particular car, the, the Wraith model in itself, has been tuned to have a little bit more uh, theatre about the exhaust than the Phantom or the, the, the Ghost or the Dawn, for example. Um, it's a little bit more of a driver's car as it's the two-seater. You're not going to be chauffeured around in something that's in two doors. Uh, two doors, sorry. Um, you're not going to be chauffeured around in something with two doors. Um, you're going to drive, want to drive that yourself. So with that came the noise, which I'm not complaining about at all. I mean, it sounded pretty awesome. It sound, sounded like it revved pretty high. Uh, and I must admit, I didn't ever get down to zero for the full power reserve. I didn't actually even see what speed we were doing. I mean, um, it did take it a little bit of time to get up to uh, as it was accelerating through the gears and through the rev range, etc. But um, yeah, it was certainly shifting by the end of it. I mean, that thing's not hanging around once you've got that momentum accelerated. Uh, as soon as the quick dual carriageway started, it was quickly disposed of, and um, I was having to stop it for the next roundabout and that is when you could really feel the weight of the car. You just get on the brakes firmly, not aggressively, but relatively firmly. The whole car pitches forward, it just rolls around a little bit as it finds its feet over the bumps as you're pushing it a little bit more. Um, and then we got it back in, into the roundabout and then back straight into sort of cruise mode. But yeah, I just love the road presence of the car. It's just so big and so wide and you sit, I think, quite high up in the car as well, so uh, without sounding too snobby, you do tend to look down on other drivers. I mean, uh, yeah, that was a really, really cool experience. So, yeah, big shout out to Miles for uh, letting me drive the car. Um, it's one of those ones where I've been very lucky to um, be involved in, obviously, things I love and uh, drive some of the cool cars that uh, the automotive industry manufactures and uh, I think the roller is definitely one that uh, is very high up on the, on the list to say I've ticked. I mean, uh, I think it motivates you that yeah, you get to sample these things and you think right I want one of these in the near future so um, yeah got to get cracking to make sure I don't have to close my own door because yeah again one of the cool things in the Phantom is <coughs> excuse me in the Wraith is one does not close one's door when you drive a Rolls Royce, you press a button and it closes it for you. Uh, so that was pretty damn cool. That also along with the Teflon based umbrella, which is which are two are in each car, in the car, sorry. Uh, so that the passenger and driver or the occupants don't have to get wet as they get out. So um, yeah, that was also a, a cool little trick that obviously Rolls Royce have. So yeah, been a wicked day. Drove home in the rain, back in the Avora. Uh, threw a few errors at me, which was uh, frustrating. Uh, but I don't have to use it tomorrow because I am off to Silverstone. So yeah, here's an um, interesting day to going up to Silverstone tomorrow. Uh, going to be filming something quite interesting, I think. Going to be playing around with some cameras and things like that. So I hope I can capture and get across what I'm trying to to do so yeah make sure you stay tuned for that video and um, yeah catch you then laters